So this is just a follow-up video to my earlier one showing Final Cut Pro 7, that's Final Cut Studio 3, being installed under OS X El Capitan, that's 10 OS X 10.11, uh, the final release, the public release. Um, just trying this out now, having downloaded the final release on the 1st of October 2015, and I thought I'd just run a follow-up video showing that it can also be reinstalled and used quite happily under El Capitan. So it's not the end of the road for this excellent and probably the last decent editing system on Earth. So let's give it a go. So I apologise for the quality of this video. I, it was interlaced um, in I Show You. So here I am installing Final Cut Studio 3 from a uh, disk image on my computer so the installer opens fine I can choose my hard drive entering my details here choosing what applications to install so I just deselect any of the content but I'm choosing the main applications so I can try those out for you Here it is installing. I've sped this up, lots of the video is nicely sped up, so hopefully it doesn't take too much of your time to watch. There it is, that's installed. Now, next stage is to update it, and you can do this for the App Store, but oftentimes I find this fails. So I'm looking to upgrade it to 7.0.3, and the update should do that, but oftentimes it doesn't update it successfully. You'd find it only gets 7.0. So what you have to do instead is locate uh, an upgrade from the Apple Store website, I've a link in the description of this video uh, and install it manually, you have to allow um, non-App Store installations to do that and once this update is installed you then get 7.0.3 which is what you need so that's done, next up I'm just installing something to work with my Canon camera that's kind of essential for me so that I can uh, capture stuff off my DSLR I wouldn't Considered to be successful if I couldn't do that, but luckily I can. That's great. Here's a small hack just to get it work with the 600D, which is the one I use. So that's not going to apply to everybody. For me, it's really important to get that, and that's how I capture my footage. So here we go for the first install 7.0.3, as you can see. And it's just checking for okay, so I'm going to go to easy setup. So it's DV PAL 25 frames a second. I don't think it really matters anymore. I'm going to save my project. And uh, next up, I'm going to import some footage from my DSLR SD card. So I've popped my DSLR SD card in. Now it opens photo, shut that down. Log and transfer. Here's a few clips. I play them back. I can hear sound at this point, which is great. I can play it back directly off of the SD card. I select a few clips. And I add them to the uh, selection queue to kind of transfer into Final Cut Pro ProRes format. Close that down, I can then start working with my clips from the browser, so I can play them back. I select portions using in and out keys on the keyboard. Take them to the timeline, that's great. Uh, for multiple clips, navigation needs to work absolutely fine. I need to get my shortcuts working on the computer, unfortunately, but um, with the function key on my laptop, which is what I'm using this off. So that's fine, clips play back, yeah. On the timeline, it conforms to the format of the clips ingested, which is great. It plays back with sound. Um, do some bit of trimming with the ripple tool. Um, next up, I wanted to put some titles in. I want to do anything I can in order to get it to render out to require a rendering. So I add a bit of uh, text on there. And transitions working fine and uh, next up um, I'll do some color correction freeware color correction working fine multiple views working fine and in, in the graphical interface of Final Cut Pro and here we've got a bit of rendering that requires rendering so next up I'm going to copy that filter across the other clip that works fine yep and I'm going to render out there it goes, rendering nicely to the hard drive of the computer, no problems there whatsoever. Uh, playing it back, that's fantastic. So I'm now going to export it. Save to my, save, export a, a video file very quick, nice. 
Next up, I'm going to just try and sh show you what it's like importing an existing project. Now, it's a bit of a crap project, I admit, because half the clips are missing. But it shows you that it opens up something and it understands what you're trying to do and it plays back without crashing from Final Cut Pro 7.0.3 on another computer running um, Yosemite. Okay, next up, I think we go for compressor. So I'm setting up a Quick Master here. So this is something that allows you to export things on multiple cores in your process, so that works fine, it never did on um, Yosemite. So here it is, I'm now going to select my video file and I'm going to recompress it to H.264, there it is, I'll play it back in quick time there. And yep, choose H.264 format, batch render, and you can see I've got a pro cluster there, and when it's ready you'll show it see that it exports on multiple clusters, multiple processors, that's great. Here I've only got two processors on my laptop, so but my desktop will be big for eight cores. Here we go trying out colour, now colour opens. DVD Studio Pro, hardly ever use that anymore, but it used to be really useful once. And that opens and you can move around in it. Finally, motion. Sadly, motion doesn't work. Uh, people might be able to work a way around that, but I don't use it. So, and that's the end of my tour of using Final Cut Pro 7 on um, El Capitan, the final public release. It looks great. I'm going to install it on mine. I'm, I've installed it on my MacBook Pro so far, but I'm going to probably install it on my desktop machine because I want to be able to use compressor again.